everyone. So today we want to make a little video for you about grades. We've had a lot of questions about grades, and so we want to just do a little quick explanation. Uh, in our last video, we talked about feedback and where to leave feedback and how to, where to send your students to find your feedback. So if you'd like to see that video, you can click right here. Um, but for today, we're going to talk about grades. Uh, I want to give you a little bit of history again. So a couple, this is about a year and a half ago when we were first creating all the training materials on where to grade. Uh, Brad, who is doing our handy filming today, uh, he was the one in charge of all these and he was trying to figure out, well, where do we send people to grade? Because we found out in Brightspace, it's not just like any other tool that we've used where you probably grade in the gradebook. We found out that in Brightspace, there's, you can grade in the gradebook, but you can also grade in these tools. And there's lots of places where students see the grade. And so where, what should we do? So today I want to take you through a little bit of our thought process and how we got there and how the tool works and warn you of two pitfalls, uh, two tools that can that look inviting, but they can be uh, damaging to what you do in your classroom. So we're going to move up here to the whiteboard today. And uh, so in the training and boot camp, we actually landed on having you give your grades inside what we call the tools, and that's discussions, assignments, and quizzes. And the reason that we did so was because we found out that when you grade in the tool, it pushes out here to the grade. So we've got the grade book, tools, okay? They, they talk to each other when you put the grade here in the tool. We also found out that when you put the grade in the tool, it pushes over here to content. So when the student goes back to the content page where the assignment was at, if your class has the assignments and content pages, the students can see their grade there as well. We also found out that when you put the grade in the, in the tool, it pushes to user progress. And within user progress, you could be seen in tools, in user progress tools. So in user progress, there's the sidebars uh, for assignments, quizzes, and discussions. They can see it there. And they can also see it in user progress grades. Um, so that was the main reason why we had you grade in the tool. Now let's show you over here in grades some interesting things. So in grades, there's actually one spot that we, we also trained you that you could grade in, and that was within the icon, right? So anytime a student does a quiz or an assignment or even a discussion post, they get this little icon saying they've done something. And when you click on that icon, it's really called the submission icon. Um, if you go to grade all in the grades tool, you'll also see it under the submission column. When you click on those icons, it brings up this grading experience that is very similar to grading in the tool. And in fact, it pushes the grade back to the tool. So if you grade in these two places in the grade book, it pushes the grade to the tool, which in turn pushes the grade to content pages and pushes the tool, the grade to user progress. So those were the two main places we told you you could grade. Um, the interesting thing is the, the grading experience, specifically in quizzes, is much different here than it is here. And that was another reason why we ended up pushing people to the tool. But in theory, either one of these places is absolutely approved by the instructor development team. But let's talk about grades, the places you don't want to grade. Um, inside grades, if you're in the grade all screen, there's this place called the grade column. Um, or sometimes some of you have seen the spreadsheet view as well. There are these nice cells that just ask to say, put a grade in me. It's like just inviting the teacher to put a grade here. The problem with these particular places, when you grade here, um, that grade stays in grades and it goes to user progress grades. In fact, 99% of the time, what a student sees in user progress grades is exactly what the student would see in grades as well. The problem with that is it doesn't go to the tool and it doesn't go over here to content pages, okay? So, if I haven't confused you yet, let's give you a scenario of why this is bad, all right? So let's just say, for example, that the teacher is grading and inside the, maybe they're grading in the tool, and for example, they saw the student didn't do anything, so they gave the student a zero, okay? So two or three days, well, sorry, let's take about what happens there. That goes to here, it goes here, and it goes here, right? It goes to both these places. All right. So what happens when two days later, the student submits 
by email maybe, a correction to this assignment, the teacher gives them half credit. So let's just say the teacher gives them 10 points. But the teacher doesn't want to go back into the tool or back over here. They want to use these inviting places to give the grade. So they give the student a 10, okay? Where does that 10 get pushed to? Well, it gets pushed over here to grades. So we can erase that and they'll see a 10 there, okay? But that's as far as it goes. So the students could potentially, this is the big problem, see a zero and a 10. They could see a miscommunication of what their grade is. They could see they have one grade in one place and another grade in another place. And that was what we were trying to avoid in training. We didn't want instructors to, to run against that problem. So what we recommended is that this place right here in red was only used for giving zeros. If you use a grade, if you sorry, if you use a zero here and the student sees no grade in these other places, well, a no grade and a zero is not so confusing. So we didn't mind that potential scenario so much. The saving grace to this whole thing is that anytime a grade is entered in grades, no matter where it's entered in grades, it gets that is officially what gets pushed to student records at the end of the semester. So ultimately, this is Trump. That will, this is what trumps everything, bad choice of words. <laughs> Don't jiggle the camera, Brad. Um, but, this, but that's what students will see is what is ultimately right there. So that is, in a nutshell, what's, how the gradebook works, where you can push students to see their grades, where you can put grades in. You kind of have to look at these experiences and figure out which one is better for you. Um, I'll tell you that a lot of our team still goes to these particular places to grade. Um, I choose particularly these places, but to each their own. Whatever you want to use, do that, but be cautious of grading here.